Hello everyone, welcome back to Games for the Mind. I present to you the seventh guest. I'll be playing the 25th anniversary edition. The original version of this game came out the same year as Myst. I was very familiar with Myst as a kid um, and its sequels, but I did not know about this game until I was an adult. Um... It's very different from Myst. Myst has uh, a lot of logic puzzles built into the world. Um, this game is more like you go into a room, you do a classic puzzle, you go into the next room, you do a classic puzzle. It's very puzzle heavy, so... Yep. Without further to do, let's get started. Remember this image of the house, by the way. It'll help you later. The seventh guest. He was a drifter, moving from town to town, robbing a gas station here, a grocery store there, until one night. She was coming home from choir practice, but she never got there. Stoff took her purse and ran away. The pittance spent, Stoff had to run and hide. He sunk even lower. He had nothing. No life, no possessions, no dreams. And that's when the vision came. A doll. And in his dream, Stoff reached out. a gift. Stoff carved the doll, whittling the haunting face until it was an exact replica. And when he was done, Stoff went to town, to a bar. The owner had a daughter. Ooh, he said his girl would love the strange doll. And Stoff offered it to the man. And the owner, in turn, offered Stoff food and a place to stay. A simple transaction. The first of many. Stoff created the puzzle, just as he saw it, and everyone wanted one. The 
Stoff opened up a shop because everyone wanted a Stoff toy. Every boy and girl in the town, and from all the neighboring towns. A Stoff toy is a toy for life, people said, and no two are alike. Everyone loved his unique toys. Henry Stoff grew wealthy, but then the strange virus came, and some of the children started dying. Isn't this a cheery place? Edward, I'm not sure we should have been here today. Why? Because it's a spooky old house? <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I'll watch out for you. <laughs> So, after that long introduction, we're able to finally take control and move around. Let me show you the map first. So if you look at the legend here, it says... A light beige equals access, and a dark brown equals solved. So, these light beige areas here we can go into, but we haven't solved the puzzles yet. Once we solve the puzzles, um, the rooms will turn dark brown. Uh, these rooms up here, you see they're very, very light. Uh, that means we can't go in there yet. Um, we either have to solve puzzles or do something else to unlock those areas. Uh, to move to a different floor, just highlight your mouse over the stairs. Click on the symbol, and here's the second floor. Can't really go anywhere on the second floor. And when we unlock this room, we'll be able to hover over here for the basement, but we can't do that yet. Okay. Let's go this way first. I want to show you guys the study. It's pretty much the most important room in the whole house. Let's go in here. See this book? We can't click on it yet, but it becomes important in just a second. That is basically the hint system of the game. And I'm going to show you how that works with the first puzzle in here. But first, let's look around a little bit. Can get some cool animations. Like if you try to go forward in there, it doesn't let you. You have to find each puzzle in each room. Uh, 
For this one, it's in the telescope, but we have to watch this weird cutscene first. See, when you highlight your mouse over the object that contains the puzzle, you get that nice brain thing. That means that's a puzzle. So let's click on it to enter the puzzle. You'll need more than lenses to focus your thoughts on this one. So Stoff does give you hints uh, during the puzzle. The annoying thing is that he will interrupt you like every two seconds. Uh, let me show you that hint book first and how it works. So we've entered the puzzle, so let's exit the puzzle. And now through entering the puzzle, we've activated the book. Let's go to the book. See, now that we've gone into the puzzle, we can click on the book. And here you'll get your first hint uh, for whichever puzzle you last went into. So for the telescope puzzle, the first hint is spell a complete sentence. Start at the letter T at the south pole of the planet. Trace a path through each letter only once and end at the starting point. Alright, now, if you want to just get out of the book into the study, you go to the left here and click here. If you want to warp back to the puzzle, which is what we want to do, you click in the middle on the brain. And you'll get this neat animation. And you're back at the puzzle, which is happens to be in the same room as the book. So to access the second hint of a puzzle, you have to go into the puzzle a second time. And exit it again, and go back to the book again. Now obviously I'm only going to show you this with the first puzzle because... You can imagine how annoying it is leaving a puzzle from really far away from the study and having to come all the way back, but I do have all the hints written down on paper, so I'll still read you each of the two hints for every puzzle in the game. So here's the second hint for the telescope. There is no possible way. So that's kind of funny because it's telling you there's no possible way to solve the puzzle, but actually the answer happens to spell there is no possible way. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the puzzle. And by the way, if you go into the puzzle a third time and go back to the book, you can skip the puzzle. It will solve the puzzle for you. However, you will not get the after puzzle cutscene for that puzzle, and you will not get the achievement for solving the puzzle. So let's actually solve the puzzle this time. Alright, so the clues said to start at the T at the South Pole, which is right here. Now this doesn't make sense. It's the only one you it uh, that it lets you click on at the beginning. And we have to spell there is no possible way, so just trace the lines till you get to the next letter in the sequence. This puzzle is the first puzzle in the game, it's pretty easy. A perplexing planetary poser. You can hit spacebar every time someone uh, interrupts you like this to just continue the puzzle. It's pretty annoying. Okay, there is... This is the only tricky part. After the N, you want to click on this O, not this one, because you have to spell possible. Oh, there Having is no... Yet? Yes, Multi? I am. Possible way. This is trickier than it looks. What twisted crime of logic would merit such a sentence? And we solved our first puzzle. And we got the achievement telescope puzzle solved. Hooray. Old man Stauff built a house and filled it with his toys. 
Six guests were invited one night. Their screams, the only noise. Blood inside the library. Blood right up the hall. Dripping down the attic stairs. Hey, guests, try not to fall. Nobody came out that night. Not one was ever seen. All that stuff is waiting there. <laughs> Crazy, sick, and mean! All right. So if you want to see that cutscene again, just click on the theater mask here, but we don't. Instead, I'm going to show you guys the first of four shortcuts already, which is in the fireplace. It'll bring you to the second floor, and that's secret passage number three, apparently. I think it was actually the last one I found when I first played the game. It brings you here... Um, up to the second floor. We can't do anything on the second floor yet, so we just have to go right back down. Uh, we can see this cutscene, though, with this lady. She appears a few times. Okay. And that cutscene, Temple is chasing a boy who we don't know yet. All right. Down the stairs we go. Here's a cutscene we could watch that we haven't seen yet, I think. My dear yes. Mr. Dutton, welcome to my house. The arrangement is simple. You are to spend the night as my guest, and in exchange, I will give you your heart's most secret desire. What that is, Mr. Dutton, don't you? I require one thing of you a special service, a task that I've set up for you. There's a guest who hasn't arrived yet. A guest unlike the six of you, a very special guest. Your services involve that guest. You must wonder what that service is, but that is the game, Mr. Dutton. The puzzle I've set for you. This is all I can tell you, Mr. Dutton. In the morning, only one of my guests will walk out of this house with his or her every wish granted. Okay, so the seventh guest is actually that boy that we saw Temple chasing. So... Stoff obviously told all of the guests to capture the boy and bring the boy to Stoff. So the only other puzzle we're, uh, we're able to solve right now is this one. We could have done these in either order. Uh, the telescope or the cake. Cake, telescope. So now we gotta do the cake. First there's a cutscene. I guess our host wants us to fend for ourselves. <laughs> oh, I've tasted better fare. At least he left his regrets. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I, uh, I don't know. Uh... Oh, it says that we're each to have a piece. Exactly the same, including the symbols. What? That's impossible. It's really not impossible. <laughs> it's pretty easy, actually. Alright, let's go into the puzzle. Ah, become a grave digger now, have we? You are a glutton for punishment. Okay, so if we had gone to the book for this puzzle twice... Here's what the hints would say. The first hint would say, Everyone wants a fair share. Solve this one, and you'll get your just desserts. Anything else is just icing on the cake. And the second hint would say, 
Cut the cake into six equal pieces so that each serving includes the same number of decorative icing. Choose sections one by one until you have your fair share. Okay, so... What you need to do in this puzzle is cut the cake into six pieces, and each piece needs to have two tombstones, two skulls, and one piece of plain icing. So the way I like to remember this is the first piece you can just go from the bottom left and just uh, make a straight line to the right. <laughs> two skulls and two stones. The and Tad will uh, give you the hint after you click the first one on what I just said. Puzzling. Yeah. Some cannot be created more equal. Right. Than yeah. So there's your first piece in a straight line right there. All right. And the second piece I like to do is up in the top right, you can do this square and this piece of icing right there. And the third piece I like to do is this Tetris shape L from the piece of icing and the rest of the top row here. And the next piece I like to do is just this entire left side. And for the last two pieces, you can go either way. You can go up here to this piece of icing and just use the other piece of icing that you didn't use for the ones on this side. All right. That should do it. Nice eyeball plates, by the way. There. And we get our achievement cake puzzle solved. And a cutscene. Don't worry. I won't bite. Edward. We could help each other out. I could help you. And you could help me. I smell her perfume. Come and talk in my bedroom upstairs, where it's nice and private. Okay. Oh, now I can move. All right, we can get out of here now. And now we can do the puzzle out here in the foyer. So let's go into that. It's easy to find a place to start. It's hard to find a place to finish. Okay, so uh, this puzzle is called the spider puzzle. And let me read you the hints. Uh, the first hint says, Seven spiders weave an eight-sided web, leaving one point vacant for the hapless victim. So at the very end of the puzzle, you'll have spiders on all the dots except one. And the second hint says, Select both a starting and a destination point along the same straight line for the spider to build his strand of the star web. Okay, so the trick to this puzzle 
is basically you have to remember where you started with a spider. You can send him anywhere, but the next spider after that has to go to where the one before him started from, okay? So let's start at the top. Which way should I go now? And go either of the two ways down either line, doesn't matter. I wonder if you will get the point of this. And you'll use the other point to send the other spider Which back to I the top. And just keep going back to the starting the point points till you star. win. I'm missing something. So now we have to send the next spider to this point, because that's where we started last time. Which way should I go now? There's something missing. This star seems to have lost its sparkle. Which way should I go now? Mm. Now we need to go here. You get it. Which way should I go now? And now we gotta go to the bottom. Which way should I go now? And there's only one more choice. And we win! Curses! Spiders puzzle solved. Come on! Come on! Come! Please! Yep, so that's Tad trying to escape. And that's all we can do in this area, really. Now, we have a choice of going either into the kitchen and basement area or upstairs. I want to go upstairs first because there's a room upstairs that provides an important hint for the basement. So let's go upstairs. Let's see what this is all about. Uh... Creepy. That's like the grudge or something. Alright, I'm not going to go in the room that contains the hint first, though. I want to go all the way down the hall this way first. I want to go in here. This is Temple's... Oh, this is the game room, actually. The Madman's Playroom! Yeah. Tell me, Madman. Can you give me real magic? Can you show me? Okay, um, there is a shortcut in this room. I don't know exactly how you activate it. Uh, you go in one of these holes in the pool table and it brings you, I believe, back to the study. But right now we can't get in there. And I'm pretty sure even after... You solve this puzzle, you still can't go in there. So I'm not sure, but we'll figure it out. I'm pretty sure this just replays what we just saw. Uh, no, it doesn't. Look at that. <laughs> well, the balloon, Sonny. Yeah. A nice one. Is this like the movie It or something? Well, the balloon. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Would not have gotten that as a kid. <laughs> Okay. All right, that's enough. <laughs> that didn't activate it. The thing, okay. Well, let's go into the puzzle. There's three chess puzzles in the game. This is one of them. This involves the queens. A queen is lethal in every direction. All right, so as usual, let's read the hints first. So the first hint says, the land is not large enough for nine queens to rule separate realms, but it is large enough for eight. And the second hint is, place eight queens on the board so that no two queens shall be in the same line horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Alright, so... Yes, I was I was literally just about to explain that. So a queen in chess, if you don't know, they can go anywhere they want, diagonally, up, down, side to side. And we have to place eight queens on this board so that none of them can hit each other. Eight 
queens. Each yep. must be out of touch. Or we could just let Tad uh, explain that. Oh, yeah, spoiler alert. We are Tad the whole time. <laughs> okay. But I'm here to explain puzzles. Whatever. Okay, so the way I like to um, solve this one is we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. <sighs> And I'm gonna bored. get interrupted every two seconds. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go from right. We're gonna count going right to left, and then go up a row, left to right, up a row, right to left. You keep alternating like that, okay? And we're gonna split it into two sections. So the first four rows is one section. The second four rows is the second section. And we're going to think about Oreo cookies. So we're going to make ourselves two Oreo cookies. So what's special about an Oreo cookie? Well, an Oreo cookie has the first layer. Uh, the first layer is a black, you know, crunchy part of the cookie. The second two layers, because, you know, it's definitely a double stuffed Oreo, um, are white. And then the fourth layer is going to be black again for the bottom side of the cookie and we're going to make two oreo cookies one for the first four rows one for the second four rows and the only other thing you need to remember is that row number two in each of the two sections is a rogue row it's going to break the rules in both sections you'll know what i mean in just a second Alright, so we're going to start in the bottom right going left, and we know that the first layer of an Oreo is black, right? So we're going to go to the first black square that we see. Simple. Now we're going to go up a row and to the left. And this is the second row of this Oreo cookie, which is the oddball. So instead of going to the first white square like we usually would, we're going to go to the second one. Then we're going to go up and to the right, and we're going to count to our first white square because that's the second layer of our double stuff white section. And then finally, we're going to go up left, and we're going to count our first black square for the end of the cookie, right? So that's the first Oreo cookie. Now for the second oreo cookie we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna go by twos instead of ones except for that that tricky second row which is the oddball is gonna be one okay so starting from the right we're gonna go to our second black square for the oreo cookie this is the oddball row so we're gonna do our first white uh stuffing up a row starting from the right we're gonna go to our second white stuffing because we're back to normal now and then finally, top left, we're going to go to our second black square for the end of the Oreo cookie, the other cookie. Hopefully that was a clear enough explanation on how to memorize that. No, they want to boy! Queen's puzzle solved. He shouldn't be here. No, curse you! You can't! Hey! Who are you? I just want to get out of here. Please, I just want to get out of here. Who are you? Why did you come here? <laughs> wait, wait. I know who you are. I know who you are. You're the seventh guest. And what I just saw, now I understand. Oh, sweet mercy, I understand. Mister, I'm sorry. I just came here. They dared me. The king, you, you're the one. I'm going to leave, Mister. Don't, don't run away, please. Don't run away. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Stop. Don't run. Yeah, so we're actually the ghost of little Tad there. Uh, spoiler alert. And we don't yet know if Temple is good or bad, but he actually is good. He's uh, he's trying to help Tad. Uh, you think that uh, at the beginning of the game, you see him chasing Tad. You think he's probably a bad guy like all the others, but no, he's not. And see, I still can't use this shortcut over here. Uh, so I guess we got to solve more puzzles to open that up or something i don't know maybe maybe it leads to a room we haven't been in yet i really don't remember but 
That's okay, we solved this puzzle, we can leave. But we'll have to come back at some point. Now, I can solve the puzzle in this room here, but I don't want to because it's a cutscene that definitely comes later in the game after you solve the puzzle in there. And this room over here is locked, so we're going to have to just go this way. And there's another cutscene of that lady. We'll see her like one or two more times. And there's this cutscene of uh, Burden, I think her name is, is seducing uh, Edward over there into her bedroom. So why don't we just follow them in there? And all we can do now is, uh, for now, is solve the puzzle. But after we solve the puzzle, we can see a very disturbing cutscene. Skipping threes and skipping fives. Perhaps that's how one derives the answer to this wordy tale. But you won't win. You're bound to fail. All right, so what Stoff just said about threes and fives is very important. Basically, you move either three or five spaces in either direction, back or forth, starting from this arrow. Uh, but let's read the two hints that we would get from looking at the book in the study. So the first hint just says spell out a phrase and the second hint says move back or ahead three or five spaces to land on a letter a star indicates the space between words each letter is used only once and don't don't land on the blanks Okay, so after we spell a word, you have to land on a star because it signifies the space between words. That's important. And so with enough trial and error, you will discover that the phrase that we're trying to spell out is The sky is ruddy, your fate is bloody. Alright, so let's get started with that. There are stars in space. But no spaces are allowed here. Only There's stars. another hint to use the stars. What did Stoff mean by threes and fives? There, there's can't the... just step anywhere. Oh God. There's the, so we need to get to our first star, which is a space between words. Okay, the sky. Sky. And we need a space here is and we need a space ruddy space your Space, fate, is, space, bloody. You don't, have to, you don't have to click on the explanation point. It's already there. <laughs> yeah, we solved that one. Getting these chivos pretty quick. Bed puzzle solved. You know the others will try to beat us. But it doesn't have to be that way. Not if you and I work together. We can solve Stoff's puzzle. We can win. You can get what you want, Edward. What is it that you want? Edward, 
Shall I try to guess? I know where the puzzles are to be solved. I know where the puzzles are. Mm -hmm. I'll take you there. But first... The perfume. The smell. It's, it's, it's changing. I, I can't breathe. Oh. I feel so sick. I will give you everything. I will give you what you want. And if you want to, for some reason listen to them have sex even further than that, you certainly can. Yep. Whatever floats your boat. So, now we can leave. And let's go into Eleanor in Edward's room, right here. Oh, it's so beautiful. And... Oh, it's a maze! I remember doing something like this when I was a little girl. You have to follow it. All the way to the center. I'd be more worried about being cheated on by your husband. Uh, I think we could look at this painting. Or something. And it's disturbing. This is, this is a lot more disturbing than mist. That's for sure. Yeah, let's go back. So, Eleanor was saying this is a maze, and it sure is. So, the entrance point to the maze is right here, and the exit point is right here. So you have to go like this. So trace that out because we're going to need it in the basement for the basement maze. Okay, but here's the real puzzle. The bishop's puzzle. And since we're playing the remake, we get this little explanation that says, Touch a bishop in order to move it. Sometimes there are multiple destinations. And sometimes a bishop cannot move at all. Okay, thanks. Don't you just love surprises? Okay, so the two hints for this one say, If my bishops cannot convert you, perhaps you can convert my bishops. That's a hint for them to switch sides with each other. And the second hint says, Use traditional bishop moves to exchange the positions of the white and black bishops. You cannot move a piece into a square where it may be captured. Okay, so this is one of the hardest puzzles in the game. And if you thought my queen's explanation was really crazy, this one is going to be even more wild. <laughs> and I assume... Probably most of you are here either for the knight's puzzle or the bishop puzzle. So, here's how I remember how to do this. We're going to split these moves. It's going to be 30 moves total. It's going to be 15 certain moves, and then it's going to be 15 moves that are mirrored. Okay? So, we are going to start... Um, with the white squared bishops. Not the bishop color, the square color that they're on. So these two are on the white squares, and these two are on white squares. So we're going to start by moving just those four bishops, okay? So the first thing you want to do is, you see these two bishops here, you want to have them both go up one. Up one, 
up one. Now you want them each, those same bishops, to go into the bottom row. Okay. Which way should I go now? You want them both on the bottom? Which way should I go now? So this guy's friends with this guy, this guy's friends with this guy, they are opposite colors. Now that there's four bishops down here, they are ready to be ruled over by their ruler. And the ruler of them is going to be this white bishop here, all the way at the top. And in order to rule over them, he's going to go in the top middle, okay? So move him Which way should I go now? up to the top middle. So now he's the ruler of these four guys, but... He's not going to be the ruler for very long. He's going to be overtaken. So, there's two things that happen before he gets overtaken. The first is that the guy that overtakes him is going to get into position to do just that, which is this guy which way should I go now? moving here. See, now he's ready to take this guy's place. And the other thing that happens, the only other thing before he gets overthrown, is that this guy, the other guy that we moved down here, is gonna go up and confront him for just a second, but then he's gonna go? get scared and scurry over to his corner, okay? And now that those two things have happened, this guy's ready to get overtaken, so uh, he moves out of the way for this guy to become the new ruler. So what happens when this guy's ruler? Well, instead of two things happening, three things are going to happen. So the first thing is that this guy wants to go all the way down here with his buddy of the same color. So get him down. Which way should I go now? All the way down. The next thing that happens is that this guy wants to take his place where he just came from, and he's going to move in a nice V-shaped pattern in front of the ruler. Which way should I go now? And the final thing that happens is that since these two guys are friends, well, this guy needs a friend of his own color, which is this guy right above him. He's going to go down. And now this guy's ready to retire as ruler, but he isn't going to go down or anything like that. He's going to stay at the top. He's just going to go like that. Which way should I go now? Which way should I go now? Okay. Now, all we got to do, we have these two guys in place at the top. All we got to do is move these two guys in place. Which way should I go now? Which way should I go now? To get them in place. You have to do it one at a time, because uh, if you don't, they could take each other. Alright, so that's it for the white squared bishops. Now we're pretty much going to do the same exact thing with the black squared bishops. These four guys right here. So it's going to be the same moves, but they're the inverse. So we're going to get these two guys to move up one. And then they're both going to go on the quote-unquote bottom row, but this time it's the top row. Which way should I go now? And of course, now it's going to go from like bishops on each side, and then later it'll be opposite colored bishops. Which way should I go now? I right, so remember, now that we have a population of four up here, they're ready to be ruled over. The ruler is going to be this white piece again. It's going to be another white piece. He's going to go in the top Which middle. I go now? All right. And he's only going to be ruler, you know, for, for two moves. We're going to get this guy, the other white ruler in place I go now? to overthrow him. And we're going to get this other guy to spit in his face for a little second and then Which scurry into the I top corner. Now? And now he's ready to be overthrown. By this guy. Now this guy, now we're dealing with opposite colors instead of like colors, because we're at the second phase, right? So this guy is this time is gonna go all the way down to be with the other color guy. Which way should I go now? 
And this guy is the one that's going to take his place here in that nice V-shaped pattern. Which way should I go now? And then this guy needs his friend, so this guy's going to go down one. Now this guy is going to retire from being a ruler, so he's not going to go down. He's just going to stay up, because he retires with dignity, so he's going to go just up and over. Which way should I go? Staying on the, ultimately, the same row. Which way should I go now? And then just move each of these two guys up one at a time Which into their spots. See, I can't just move him into a spot, because he could get taken, so we gotta move him first. And move either Which one into their I spots. And we're gonna be done. No! Woo! That was really something. We got the achievement Bishop's Puzzle Solved. And for some reason, no cutscene. And also, we can't go in this door yet. I'm thinking because we haven't been in the kitchen yet. And maybe you got to do that first. I don't know. What about this mirror? Okay, well, let's just get out of here. And we should be done on the top floor for now. So let's just go back downstairs. And this time, let's go into the kitchen area. Oh, I guess we have to go this way first. In this door here. And yeah, maybe now we can, uh... When all the seven guests have gathered, you must figure out what I want. It's a puzzle, Mrs. Knox. And mind you, the others are also working at the same task. <laughs> it may all depend on who has the greatest need, or who is the bravest. There are clues throughout this house as to what must be done. The house is alive with clues. Hoping to meet you in the flesh. I mean, you name your host, Henry Snuff. Alright, what else can we do now? I know there's a lot to click on in here, I think, but not right this second. Okay, so in order to go in this door, which leads to the basement, uh, we have to solve this puzzle here. Here's food for thought. Be warned, though. Your mind will be gorged before this night is done. <laughs> Okay, so, this is the cans puzzle. Let's read the two hints that we'd get if we went all the way back to the study to get hints. The first one would say, Rearrange the cans on the shelves so that the lettered labels form a sentence. Well, that's pretty easy to deduce. And the second hint says, Bashful Nomad, Craftily 
agilely meet secretly near my underground vault. Okay, so... You have a lot of the letter Y. You have a lot of the letter S. So let's see. Um, you quickly would discover that up here, you cannot spell the word the. Or there's no... There's no E. So... Let's, let's work through that second hint. Bashful Nomad. So bashful is another word for shy. So up here is shy. Nomad. Another word for nomad given these uh, select few letters is gypsy. Okay, so gypsy goes here. Uh, the next word in the hint is craftily. So over here... Another word for that is slyly. Okay. Agilely. Another word for agilely is um, uh, spryly. So slyly, spryly. Meet secretly near my underground vault. So meet in secret. Another word for meeting in secret, usually in a uh, romantic relationship, is tryst. These two words would be by my, and an underground vault is a crypt. So the answer is shy, gypsy, slyly, spryly, tryst, by my crypt. Okay, so we just have to unscramble the cans now. There's more to these cans than meets the eye. I don't think you can do this. Very funny. Yes. All right. There. Now I've solved it. All right. So that's the cans puzzle solved. So I realize I've been going for about an hour now, so I guess this is a good place to stop this episode. This is Games for the Mind, and I can't wait to continue this amazing game. See you guys in the next video. Take care.